welcome back to BT. Tuesday morning, the weekend after Innocence and Experience Tour, you two in Vancouver, Rogers Arena, a big part of your journey. Patrick Stark is his name, yes. uh, filmmaker uh, here in our city, One Life, No Regrets. For yes. people that don't know this story, yes. what is this documentary about, Patrick? It's about, it's, it's really not about a chase for you, know, for you two. It's, it's about fear and how it stands in the way of what we do or don't do with our lives. And I thought I'd be a guinea pig in my own film and face a fear of singing in front of people. I've been terrified of singing since I was a little kid. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really discover, I, I'm not saying I have a good voice, but I didn't even discover my own voice until I, I got my first car and listening to, well, the only cassette, so that's how old I am, <laughs> cassette was uh, U2's Under a Blood Red Sky, the, the live album from their, their war tour. So. And U2 has been a big part uh, of the vision. I mean, I the love the, the idea of a documentary to say, I'm going to do something where I can overcome my fears, and your fear of singing in public with the big, arguably the biggest band in the world, U2, here. Yes. Uh, tell us about this, because this was a big deal last week, and you yes. had a chance encounter. You've been making this film for six years, yes. and somebody sent you a Facebook message uh, as U2 is sitting in Shambar restaurant. Tell us how this played out here. It was, it was really crazy. I, I, I thought that after six months of going, trying to go through the proper channels. I, I wanted to do it the right way. Um, I thought, I'm never going to be able to pitch the band. And the only way that this will ever happen is if I pitch the band directly. By Saturday, this is Saturday of two weeks ago, Yeah, I was ready to give up. But I thought the only way I would do it is if the story got out there in a bigger way. And then I'm, I'm looking at my Facebook, and, and then a, a message pops up. Patrick, well, this is not just a private message. It's an open message. Patrick, you, Bono, and you two just walked into Shambar. Get down here. And I'm thinking, oh no, I, I, I have to face this right now. I have to pitch it. But I'm also thinking, is this the right way? I'm going to be disturbing these guys during their dinner. Um, is this the right way to go? And then, you know, my feet just started walking. I thought, if I don't do it now, I'll, I'll never do it. Meanwhile, friends and family, everybody starting to chime in. My phone, as I was walking to Shambar, yeah. was going ding, 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 Everybody's ding, ding. behind you. With Everybody's this behind me. That, I've, I have a lot of support, um, friends, family, strangers. Um, everyone seems to love the idea of just an everyday average guy who is not, you know, this is not the voice for me. This is not American Idol. Yeah. Um, Potentially realizing a vision. So realizing a vision. So yes. you get inside Shambar, you see you two at the table. <laughs> this is guts to go up there and have this moment because this is well, six years in the making for a film. Yes, I actually sat up at the bar first, talked to my friend who was there. He didn't want me to sit with him because he thought they might get kicked out of the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought, I'm going to do it. So I walked toward the booth. I could see their hair above the, <laughs> above the booth. Thought, yeah. Okay, this is really them, and, and I approached the table, and um, and saw them all there and for the first time. You know, they all look up, and then Bono was reading my shirt, and he goes, "Hey, hey, hey, Ironhead," you know, and and it was very friendly. Stood up, shook my hand before I even said anything, and then I pitched the film. Six-year journey. I'm in this film, facing a fear of singing in front of people, um, from a first vocal lesson to singing on the street to one-on-one -on -one with rock veterans. Um, Steve Lillywhite, that's their producer. Uh, Daniel Lanois is in the movie. That's another one of their producers, of course, the great Daniel Lanois. Yeah. And then they started to really listen. And I said, and what I envision, you know, this is an extreme exposure scenario. I envision myself on a stage singing one song. Oh, sorry, in a stadium filled with people singing one song with the biggest band in the world. Not half a second later, Bono goes, sure. So he says yes. Come Friday night, you already had tickets to the show, and then obviously we reported last week the passing of the now late BB King, the King uh, legend of, of the blues. So they're going to do a tribute. This did not happen on Friday night as what was hoped. Right. So what happens now? You know, well, first of all, you know, in the way I live is family comes first, and it, it wasn't just B.B. King. They had a rough week. Yeah. Um, the drummer lost his father the day after I pitched the band. Um, and then B.B. King passed away. I mean, the, the king of, of the blues. I a mean, lot of things going on. I mean, a lot of things going on, and the start of their tour. I, you know, I'd be, you know, arrogant and, and foolish to think that what I was doing could ever stand in the way of, of that. And um, but I have to say that, I mean, I, I went to the concerts, absolutely phenomenal. I was, I was on a high for a week just thinking about, I, I pitched the band. I really have accomplished what I set out to do. No, I have not sung in a stadium, but I, I'll tell you, when I was at the stadium and I was at the foot of the round after the long, you know, the long catwalk stage and watching the concert unfold, and I thought, 
I, I'm actually ready. I actually could stand on that stage, walk out there, looking around at all of those people. But I also felt that if I went up on that stage that I'd have that love and support of the crowd. Mm. But I felt I could do it. And that's the first time I felt that in the entire journey. Well, th that's a remarkable transformation, and I think that's what any good movie is all about. Yes. One Life, No Regrets. When can people finally watch this documentary? Well, after we, we've finalized it, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. It is the start of the tour. I am a little hopeful, yeah. but, you know, anything can happen. Um, I'm thinking, you know, six to seven months of very hard work in post-production, and, and we'll have something ready. Fingers crossed. It works yes, out yes, for you, yes, Patrick. Thank you so much. Congrats you. for going after your vision and your dream. Thank you.